Go ahead, Dale. Sorry. Go ahead, Dave. <laughs> I was going to say, if we're being real, I mean, we had just an insane year last year. I think where everything that could happen happened. Uh, the only thing missing from the slate here is an alien right. invasion. Yep. I don't know what else could happen. Then the discovery was an accident. Day both sides pro is here to explain all of this for us. This is a strange one, huh? This is a strange one. Well, if you dig deeper into the big pandemic bill and spending package passed late last year, you'll see an unusual demand. Yes, U.S. intelligence agencies have less than six months to tell Congress what they know about unidentified aerial phenomena. Antarctica, a continent that has captured our imagination for centuries, this land of extremes is famous for keeping its secrets. A British team of scientists has unraveled a new one. And uh, scientists who bored a hole through an Antarctic ice shelf have discovered new species living in total darkness on the seabed. But the British Atlantic Survey's accidental discovery of sea life has challenged our understanding of Antarctica. One of the study's authors said he never expected to find such creatures living so far from daylight. And they found little sponges as well on this rock and they were just dumbfounded because how, how could this survive? It's 160 miles away from an open ocean where it could achieve any light at all. Again, it's thousands of feet down. It's probably 4,500 to 5,000 feet down. They found bacteria, sponges, and animals with a stalk-like head, which could be a form of predator known as a hydroid. We are taking you into the deep on the search for the giant squid. It's a deep ocean creature, it's elusive, and it more than lives up to its name. For the first time, the giant squid was captured on video in U.S. waters. This happened in the Gulf of Mexico. One of nature's most spectacular shows, the eruption of a volcano, has been going on apparently harmlessly on the Italian island of Sicily. Mount Etna, Europe's most active volcano, has been blowing out smoke and lava. Italy's chief volcano scientist says it's nothing to worry about, but because small stones and ash are being thrown into the air, the nearby airport was closed. Powerful tremor has jolted Japan just weeks from the 10-year anniversary of the Fukushima earthquake disaster. Scientists have described it as an aftershock almost a decade in the making. A strong overnight quake as it hit northeastern Japan off the coast of Fukushima. The initial quake was followed by a series of aftershocks. <laughs> A 7.3 magnitude earthquake rippling across Japan. The shaking so violent, it cut power to a million households. Started fires and set off sprinkler systems flooding this train station. More than a hundred people were injured. Most at home as items not bolted down, rattled and fell. The earthquake's epicentre was just 70 kilometres off the Fukushima coastline. The tremors felt in Tokyo and even further south. It hit almost 10 years to the day since the devastating 9.0 magnitude quake. As residents began cleaning up the aftermath, officials are calling on people to remain on the alert for further aftershocks in the coming weeks. West Africa is facing a resurgence of Ebola, the first since the end of a 2016 outbreak, which killed more than 11,000 people. Now, back then, the epidemic began in Guinea, and now that same country has recorded seven new confirmed cases. The new cases are in the Nizirokar region, the same place where Guinea's last epidemic started. For health authorities, it is for now a race against time to trace and isolate contact cases before it's too late. The United States is working closely with several African countries at risk in a new Ebola outbreak happening in Central and West Africa. With COVID concern taking over day-to-day -day life, should we be concerned about another potential pandemic? His ambitious deputy Kamala Harris was telephoning foreign leaders. That's a novelty for a vice president. And this week, he emerged to participate in a sanitized town hall being interviewed by the Bidenista Anderson Cooper of CNN. 
Biden promptly gave away his teleprompter and the result was nothing short of a disaster. A lot of people don't know how to register. Not everybody in the community, in the Hispanic and the African American community, particularly in uh, uh, rural areas that are distant and or inner city districts, know how to use, know how to get online to determine how to get in line for that COVID vaccination. Well, what a way to offend almost all of your voter base. Anyway, it was capped off by Biden admitting he doesn't really know where he is a lot of the time and he actually needs to ask his carer, um, I'm sorry, his wife, where he is when he wakes up in the morning. Over the years, over your career, you've already spent a great deal of time at 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue, except now you're living there and you're president. It's been four weeks. What's it like? How's it different? I get up in the morning and look at Joe and say, where the hell are we? Well, he should get some marks because that was probably the most honest thing he said during the entire event. Now, I'm not here tonight to highlight the mental impairment of Joe Biden. It's too easy. And it's not his fault. But he did run for office knowing that the decline in his capacity was accelerating. And so did the media. And so did the Democratic Party. Yet they all chose to cover it up. Andy Rose Ramos caught up with Maryland's UFO Network for their take on this upcoming report. Mark Gershney remembers his first sighting like it was yesterday. I looked up at the sun and right under the sun was a black UFO. It was the standard saucer shape with a little dome on the top. It he happened while he was there, with his right son. Over. He couldn't see it, but I could see it as clearly as the nose on your face. Since then, he's had multiple yeah. sightings. You know I've seen UFOs right here on the corner by my house. I've seen the kind that just seems like a ball of molten metal, glowing white plasma ball that just, you know, gently floated overhead and then passed through the trees. My wife and I both saw that. He's now the president of Maryland's chapter of the Mutual UFO Network, also known as MUFON, investigating sightings in the state. Maryland has seen 11 cases already this year. And soon, Mark's belief in UFOs could be corroborated. As part of the COVID-19 relief and spending bill, intelligence agencies have less than six months to tell Congress what they know about UFOs. If it's something of outside, outside this planet, that might actually be better than the fact that we've seen some technological leap on behalf of the Chinese or the Russians or some other adversary. But for Mark, he hopes this report will shed light on what may loom in our universe. I think it's good though for the country and I think it's good for a civilization as we evolve to understand what's really going on out there. And now to Elk Grove for at least four months now. Did you hear that? Neighbors have been reporting loud booms at night. Keep in mind, police have made multiple arrests, but another explosion happened today near a church. A flash of light in the sky, followed by a ground-shaking boom. This video was taken in October, one of the first complaints of explosions that have rocked Elk Grove for months. Happens, I mean, like once a month now. Just Singh, who lives behind the Calvary Christian Center, says it always happens after midnight. On Monday, he heard it again. This is the loudest one like we ever heard. He says it seemed to wake the entire neighborhood. The Elk Grove Police Department says investigators found evidence of the explosion in the area and are working to determine what caused it and who's responsible. The explosion's an ongoing problem keeping the department busy despite numerous arrests. Alrighty, well, Ooh. getting... All right. Let's prepare ourselves for this yeah. day haul. Mm -hmm. While getting ready for his live shot this morning, our Dylan Kendrick looked up and gasped. Gasped, we say. He saw a string of strange lights zipping across the valley sky. He's not the only one. So what was it? Do we need to like call the men in black or something? Let's bring in Dylan. <laughs> Dylan, what did you see? Oh man, so you know, I'm just gonna start off with saying I'm not the average Joe who starts talking aliens just randomly to get people fired up this morning. No, that's more fun. But let's, let's talk. I mean, I hope we could. 
<laughs> I hope we can show some of the video, but what we saw, uh, my photographer Luis and I were just talking in between that live shot uh, that we brought to you in the five o'clock hour, looked up and just saw at least 20 or 30 uh, lights just kind of coming into a place. So there was a dark sky, nothing, and then these like bright lights just started coming out and uh, just moving uh, about uh, so in a southeasterly direction. Uh, one of the strangest things I've seen, like I said, uh, at this point they're unidentified. UFOs don't associate all the time with aliens, but uh, at this point I, I just, I've never seen anything like it. Folks are reaching out to me on Twitter for my video. Uh, it was spotted out in California, which tells us these aren't airplanes, they're not drones, but uh, wow guys, I mean, you guys can chime in. You've seen the video too. Just let yeah. everyone know at home I'm not crazy.